come and please come. Perry, I'm going to ask you to ask the Lord to bless the tithes and offerings today. Let's pray. <coughs>
Lord Father, again, thank you for that. For the cold weather shelter, Lord, Lord, please bring more, more ladies, Lord, to, to work the overnight shift, Lord. Lord Father, thank you so much for that ministry, Lord. Yes. Lord, for streets, thank you, thank you, Lord. Just thank you so much that that we're able to to serve, Lord. Just and, and just just open the, the ears and open the eyes and and just write your word upon the people's hearts, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord. We come yes. today, Lord. Yes. Just open their eyes, Lord. Lord Father, I just thank you so much for the for the folks that are that are going to be coming here today, or that may be even here right now. They don't know you, Lord. That they. That you would open their eyes, that you would soften their hearts, that you would give them a new heart, Lord. Lord Father, we're so thankful that, that you change lives every single day, Lord. Lord, help us with our purpose. Lord, just show us the, our purpose, Lord, at all times and how we can better serve you. Father, again, I just we're just so thankful just to be able to, to come before you, Lord. And we know that you hear our prayers, Lord. Yes. Where two or three are gathered, yes. and there's certainly more than that, Lord. Yes. And we know that you hear our prayers. And we're so thankful yeah. for that. Father, for all of the people that are sick right now, Lord, there's so much sickness going around, Lord. And I just ask that you put a healing upon every yes. person, Lord. Yeah. Lord, Father, I just, you are the great physician. You're the great yeah. healer. We, we have not because we ask not, Lord. And so we do ask, Lord. We ask that you put a healing, yeah. physical healing on anyone that yeah. needs it. Spiritual healing, Lord. Father, please heal, heal anybody with any spiritual anguish, Lord, with with just the, the things that come with this world, Lord, that we just that we can't handle, Lord, that we just ask, we just turn it all over to you and we lay it at your feet, Lord. Yes. Father, we're just again yes. just so thankful to be able to do that you give us that opportunity. Thank Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for making a way for us, Lord. Thank you so much that that we know that you are God and that you are that you're coming back, Lord. And we're just so we're just so thankful for that knowledge as well. Lord, your word, Lord, just have, just press upon every single one of us, Lord, to get into your word, yes. to study your word, just write your word upon our hearts, Lord, yes. so that we know that we can turn to it, Lord, that we know that that your all of your commandments, Lord, that you just just so much, Lord, just just learning about you, Holy Spirit, learning about your love, Lord, just just remind us all of that at all yes. points in time, please, Father. Father, again, we love you, we praise you, we give you all of the glory. In yes. Jesus' holy, holy, precious name, amen. 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 Lord gives me a song every once in a while, and uh, this is one that blesses me when I listen to it. And uh, it talks about all the Lord has done for us and what he's still doing in our lives. And I hope you're blessed by it. He is so good.
Because everybody needs M&Ms, right? No, that's not right. All right, so 165, everybody there? Yeah. I want you to keep that on that page. Raise your hand, hold up the hymnal to 165. Hold it up. Don't lose that page. Okay, do not lose that page. Are we all on the same page? You'll love it when the plan comes together. Why don't we sing while you preach? <laughs> uh, maybe. Okay, is it good to be on the same page? Depends on what it is, right? All right, let me try it this way then. What about if God's involved? Is it good to be on his page? Yes. All right, so now we're together on the same page. I like that. At Ensley First Baptist Church, you're there, by the way. We lovingly call this the battleship. The page we are on is grace. Amen? We're always going to be on the page of grace. No matter what, well, as long as I'm here. We're going to be on the page of grace uh, at all times. Amen? There's no other page to be when it comes to uh, salvation, how we treat each other, how God operates. Uh, and so keep that in mind. Paul had received Jesus' gospel, the gospel of grace, not from men. He received it from who? Jesus, right? The gospel of grace. So Paul was doing his thing. He was called to the Gentiles. And, but what about Peter, James, John? What about the apostles? In a different region, did they have the gospel of grace too, or did they have something else? It's kind of what, where we're heading with this. Were they on the same page? Can God keep Christians in different regions, locations, different parts of the world on the same page? Amen. Thank God for the Bible, right? Amen. But even though we got the Bible, sometimes we're not on the same page. Right? Three years after his conversion, in Galatians chapter 1, verse 18 and 19, we looked at this weeks ago, uh, Paul went to Jerusalem. Now, uh, we see in chapter 2, now he notes his second trip to Jerusalem. We're going to see that today out of reverence to God's word. Please stand and open your Bible to Galatians 2. That's if you want to be on the same page. Galatians 2, verse 1 and 2, we'll start off with today. Keep that amazing grace close by to you, if you would. I may ask Steve Henry just to break out in song at any given moment. <laughs> Here we go. Then, 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I, which I preach among who? Among the, the, Gentiles. the Gentiles. But privately to them which were of reputation. Lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. That is, running on empty. Praise God. Please be seated. So time for a road trip. How many of you like road trips? Anybody? <coughs> you still like to pack the car full of M&Ms and just hit it. Anyone? <coughs> I'm a peanut M&M guy. That's pre-keto. Um, love me some peanut M&Ms. So, don't give me any, please. So, time for the road trip for Paul. He didn't jump into his uh, SUV, however. Well, that's how they rolled back then. Look at verse 1 again. Uh, look at this verse. Then, 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, take note, and took Titus with me also. This is important. You can't just fly through these verses before we chew on what's going on here. Paul and the boys. Barnabas, how many of you know what Barnabas, his name means, or what he was known for, probably a better way to say it. What was Barnabas known for? Who said it? Jalen said it, or you said it? Give Bob the credit? Yes. Yes. Encouragement. He was the son of encouragement. Say that with me. Son, son of encouragement. 
was not an encourager. Barnabas was an encourager. Um, you can mark, do you have your pens ready? Your bulletins, mark on your bulletin, Acts 4, 36. Acts 4, 36. The same gift many of you have. Don't raise your hands, but I know many in this room have encouraged me for many years. Truthfully, 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 I wouldn't be here without God putting you in my life to be an encourager to me. Same gift many of you have. I, I look for it, too. Um, in conversations, God will stop me in my tracks, and, and, and he'll be reminding me, this conversation is not just in passing. I, I'm trying to help you out here, right? You ever look for God, God's encouragement when he's trying to, we get so busy, though, we don't got time to stop for that. We got this, right? When God is using a brother or sister in Christ to lift up your spirits, can I make a suggestion that we should take it? Amen. Amen. Take that. Take it. Pastors, missionaries, side note, good news, we voted as a church to now start supporting Julian in uh, the Baltic states. Praise God. And that's exciting. That's, we're we're uh, involved in Ensley and in other parts of the world. Isn't that cool? Amen. Amen. So, Pastors, missionaries, Sunday school teachers, deacons especially. Man, do deacons need some encouragement. Encourage them before he leaves today. So pastors, we need encouragement. Paul needed encouragement, he, and um, your pastor needs encouragement, and uh, that's what Barnabas was all about. Titus is also on this road trip with Paul. Titus was a Jew or a Gentile? Who's that? That you're on fire. Must be the MMs. He's a Gentile, right? He was a Gentile. Paul was sent to the Gentiles, right? He was sent to the Gentiles. And uh, Titus, uh, I'm assuming, was uh, Paul was a huge part of his discipleship. And we see in this picture on this road trip both Jew and Gentiles going together to Jerusalem. The trip is to find out. God's plan, are they all on the same page as to grace? Remember, just speaking quickly, we're going to get more into this next week, but remember from our previous sermons when we jumped into Galatians 1, there were the Judaizers. The Judaizers would come along and say, praise God, you know, it's good that you are saved by Jesus. Now let's hurry up and get you circumcised so we can seal the deal. <coughs> So, so, so the deal is, Paul's going to find out if they're on the same page. Grace alone for salvation. Uh, he couldn't send a text. Phone. Couldn't send a text. Say, hey, hey, James. James, yeah, James. And James would text back, what's up, what's up, Paul, how you doing? Uh, just want to make sure we're on the same page with this whole grace thing. Send Maybe an emoji with a big smiley face. Or, <laughs> are we good? There was, no, there was no texting, right? There's no phone call. There was no email. There was a road trip to find out if they were on the same page. You get the impression with Titus, get your pen ready to mark these verses down for further study. You get the impression with Titus that he had Paul's back throughout. Well, for the most part. You get that idea. Titus had Paul's back. 1 Corinthians 7, 6. 2 Corinthians 2, 13. 2 Corinthians 8, 6. And 2 Corinthians 8, 16. If you'll check that out, if you didn't catch that, we'll share it with you later. When I was at times at this church, mighty low. I mean, in the, my grandmother always used to say, you look like you're in the dumps, you know, when the, you just, your jaw drops, you, you, you know, you're kind of pouting, your life is uh, serving up uh, lemons and there's no sugar for lemonades. Are you with me? It's just, everything's a bummer and things aren't going well. And when I was mighty low over the years at this church, Joyce, your husband would come along and he would be my Barnabas for many years, Bob Duke. Bob Duke was an amazing Barnabas to me. Because there was times, if I had a towel, I would throw it in. And he'd pick it back up and, and wash it and wipe the 
with tears on my face and say, well, God's got this. He would say, uh, how'd it go? He'd say, it's going to be okay. That's, those are the words he would always say to me, Joyce. It's going to be okay. Those five words ring in my head when you feel like giving up. He was, he was uh, like a Barnabas to me. It's important, isn't it? To lift yeah. each other up. It's yeah. not just preachers. Yeah. We all need to be lifted up and encouraged. We all need that hug when things are down, when life is down, and to get that encouragement that things are going to be okay. Yeah. Uh, we need to encourage our kids. Our kids need to encourage us. I, uh, <laughs> side note, this is funny. I, I uh, get a kiss on the cheek from my girls. they I was sick again, pray for her. And I was leaving today and I got my, you know, the butterfly kiss on each cheek. And then I looked to the boy. <laughs> who's 19. And I wanted some encouragement for, from him. And I said, are you going to kiss your dad or what? He's a grown man now. So you can't kiss his dad. So I grabbed him by his head and I gave him a kiss on the cheek. <laughs> Is that okay? Yes. Every preacher, every person needs a Barnabas and a Titus. Are you that? To someone, are you listening to the Holy Spirit so he can guide you? And who needs to be encouraged today? Maybe somebody just filled with negativity. Remind them, because maybe things aren't going so well in their life. Don't, don't feed into that. Feed in some encouragement, some love. Have their back. Be there for them. We, that's the body of Christ in action. Amen? Amen. Every person needs encouragement. And that faithful person to come around, come behind and, and cover their back. Now also note in this first verse, also, I'm struck by the time and the distance. Paul's ministry at this point had been going on a long time, almost as long as I've been at this church. 14 years is no short period of time in my book. A lot goes on in our lives in 14 years. I want you to reflect, but don't daydream too long. But go back in your mind's eye right now. What happened or what's happened in your life for the past 14 years? A lot happens, right? A lot of changes, a lot of adjustments. So Paul's ministry had been going on for 14 years. So when you read the Bible in your personal study, I love it that Travis prayed. God, give us that, whatever he said, the desire, the want to, to be in our Bibles, just a hunger for it, right? To want to be in it every day. When you read your Bible, don't miss the time stamps. And then compare that time stamp with what's going on in your life. A lot of times, one verse can cover many, many years. So a lot has happened. Paul had been, remember, in the desert for, for three years, growing with Christ, receiving revelation from Christ, he had been ministering, he had been growing, but the one thing that was on his page was grace. And he wanted to know, and God had sent him to find out if, if those in Jerusalem, if the, the leadership of the church were on the same page that he was on, saved by grace alone, or grace plus works, works. Which, which is it? And we know where it is. I was once rebuked, and we're going to go here in this direction as we head towards the end of the sermon today, right outside of that door, <laughs> pulled aside, rebuked for, uh, for something that, uh, that we were, well, let me put it this way, pulled aside for, uh, after, a, after a service, um, My liberty as a as a pastor and my leadership in, in allowing certain liberties was in question. Does that make sense? I'm trying to be vague here because I don't want to. The person the person came back to me just to cut to the chase a year later in tears and and apologized. So it's all good. And it's nothing bad. But I just want to protect the person's uh, identity. So this person rebuked me. And let's just say the person didn't like our Gentile freedom that we experience here at Ensley First Baptist Church. Okay? I was not raised a Jew. I was raised a wretch, a heathen. Uh, I was raised, I was not saved. I, I was, uh, 
involved in a lot of bad stuff, see? And so, so I didn't have a religious background, and, and I just thought, yeah, there's a God, and uh, maybe, maybe I'll do enough good things before I kick the bucket and I'll get to heaven, but I learned that that's not the way it worked. So this person struggled with some of our ways, let's, let's just say. And, uh, and the meeting went well, because I'm going to read you some scripture in a moment, but the meeting went basically like me sharing that I understand why you struggle with this, and that doesn't upset me, and I hope we can be friends, and I don't want you to be upset. But we learn in the body of Christ that not every church is for every Christian, right? We pray for like-minded people here, right? This person just didn't like a specific practice that we were involved in, which is not sin. I'm about to read to you that it's not sin. Romans chapter 14, if you'll turn there, and uh, you can just follow along. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. However, I think the whole chapter would be excellent for you to read slowly and in due time. Romans 14 Verse 1. Some of you have different translations, but I'm coming with the King James. Here we go. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. Pause there just for a moment. Discern the situation and don't debate when somebody has a problem with the freedom, the grace that you're exercising in Christ. If you don't understand it to be sin, or you don't understand it to be a tradition, it's, a, it's not a big deal to you. It might be a big deal to somebody else. Am I making sense? Amen. Okay, And we don't want to get in a battle with them over that. With those that lean to legalism, don't get in a battle with them. Verse 2 of, of Romans 14. For one believeth that he may eat all things. Maybe the picture is coming clear to you. For one believeth that he may eat all things. Now, we're in a Baptist church, and pretty much Baptists will eat pretty much all things. <laughs> if it's not Lutheran, it's... <laughs> right? Uh, confession, or maybe a better word is, would you admit to, by a raising of the right hand, have you ever been to Sonny's Barbecue? Yeah. Yeah. Half of you. Okay, let me try it this way. Any of you ever had barbecue? Raise your hand. Okay. So back to verse 2. For one believeth that he may eat all things. Another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. Notice there will be no despising here. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. For God hath received him. Who art thou that judgeth another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. One man esteemeth one day, don't miss this, one day, one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. I want to pause there for just a minute. Is it okay if Jeff Henry, in your understanding of Christianity, wants to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ 365 days a year? Amen. Amen. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord. Do you say grace and thank him for your fruit, by the way? For he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and giveth God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, and none, no man dieth to himself. I would encourage you to read that old chapter. It deals with the, the stumbling block that we can become and so forth. But I also want you to check out Acts chapter 10. Remember Peter Peter's situation before he went to Cornelius. Remember God showed him all these unclean animals that came down on the screen in the sky and, he, and Peter was told to go ahead and eat. That messed with Peter in a big time way. But moving along, I would also encourage you to read uh, uh, Acts chapter 15. We, out there, outside that door, in that conversation, 
gracefully parting ways, but we were not on the same page as to the grace of Jesus Christ. Does that make sense to you? Okay. No hateful feelings. Wasn't going to try to convince her, him. Wasn't going to try to convince this person to go and uh, to Sonny's with me. And that person came back later and understood my position. And it all ended very well. That's how it should be. Uh, reason for this road trip. Let's move along, verse 2. And I went up by revelation. You know, Paul had a, obviously, a, a relationship with Jesus Christ, a direct connection with Jesus Christ in many cases, listening to the power of the Holy Spirit in his life. And by the way, you can have that too if you're born again and the Holy Spirit is filling you and you are moving and breathing with the Holy Spirit. And I went up by revelation. The reason Paul went to Jerusalem, he wasn't summoned there by James. Have you ever been summoned anywhere? To the principal's office, anyone? Court. <laughs> yeah? I, oh, some of you, I can't believe that. <laughs> Have you ever been, I've been summoned far too often in my life. Again, the reason is God told him to. Revelation. Jesus told him to go, and, uh, and this was all to see if they were on the same page. Following along, and I went up by revelation... And communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles. What gospel? Though we're in the book of the, the, the letter to the Galatian churches, the one that's my favorite, the verses, the two verses that are my favorite, where Paul puts it in a very concise way, was to the, the letter to the, the Ephesians in chapter 8, uh, sorry, chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. It says this. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It's not something you've done. It is the gift of God. Amen. Not of works, lest any man should boast. That's right. You're saved because of the grace of God. So Paul, is, as we head into this chapter, let's, we'll call this the introduction to chapter 2. We have to understand that that's much of this letter we're looking at. You're going to continue to hear about grace. You're going to continue to hear about this unmerited favor. You're going to continue to learn that you didn't save yourself. You can't keep yourself saved. And one of the concerns that we have is that the longer we do church, we start to compare ourselves with others. Maybe God has blessed you and you are maturing in the faith. And you're not the same rich you used to be in the sense of you don't do dope anymore, you don't, you don't drink anymore, you don't fight, you don't cuss, you don't cuss near as much anymore. Amen. You're getting better at it. Maybe you're seeing growth. But then one of the things we've got to be careful of is that we start to look at others. <laughs> And compare ourselves. Right? We've got to be careful of that. Right? Amen? Amen? Specifically, Paul meets with the leadership, but privately to them which were of reputation. Now, of course, that's the apostles. Least, uh, lest, excuse me, by any means I should run or had run in vain. And that, in the language, is running on empty. Paul wanted to make sure the grace tank was full. He went there with boldness. He's sent there by God, and God is letting them all know that they're, they're going to be on the same page. Um, a private meeting, a private meeting to see if they were all on the same page. Are we all about grace here? We have to be. We have to be. There's no other way. There's no other way. It's not grace plus works. Now, Gary, praise God, in his Sunday school class was teaching about 
about after we're saved, the works that we do. We're motivated, John 14, 15, because we love God. That's why we want to keep his commandments. So we want to, we want to work because we love the God that, loves us, that loved us first. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Love is why you do this little bitty church does so many awesome things for Jesus, but our motivation is not because of I've got I've to work my way to heaven or I've got to do more work so I can keep pleasing God. No, let, just let it be love. Amen. And then when you're grumpy, anybody been grumpy? <laughs> How about last week? Anybody been grumpy while you've been working here and somebody, but my wife had her hand up super fast. We, if you've been grumpy here because the people that you're trying to serve, which ultimately you're trying to serve Jesus, remember, maybe weren't nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but why are we doing anything we're doing here? Love. We love God, and yes, he'll help us love even those that are grumpy towards us. Amen? Yeah. Let's, let's never forget that. And, and we're coming back to grace. We're coming back to grace. So let's talk about streets as we close. Let's talk about streets as we close. Uh, you got your hymn book ready? 165. <clears throat> Amazing grace. Christians, 
you've been Christians a long time, don't fall back into it. Don't start to think you're something. Don't start to, to, to expect those that are still struggling to realize they need Jesus, that they're supposed to get there overnight. Is that making sense? Yes. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart a man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. One of my favorite verses in the entire Bible, Romans 10, 13, cries out that we're to cry out. It says that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Have you been saved by Jesus Christ? You come to him broken. You come to him not trying to impress him. You come to him knowing that you're going to hell without him. And you come to him and you say, save me. And he answers that prayer every time. He will save your soul. I hope I'm preaching to a bunch of saved folks. But make sure. And listen, if you're saved and you're struggling with this life, you need to rededicate your life to Christ. You need to feel his grace again, his forgiveness. You come. Maybe you feel like this is supposed to be your mission field. You don't have to go to the Baltic states to be a missionary. You're supposed to be one in your own backyard. Amen. If you need to come and rededicate your life to Christ, if you want to join this mission field, let us know. We're saying about Jesus here. At the time of invitation, you can come and pray. Come. Victory in Jesus, in your name we pray. All God's children said, Amen. Amen.